This is the uh, notes for section 3.1. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you uh, pause the video at this time and uh, read section 3.1 uh, before going on with these notes. So in 3.1, we're, we're looking actually in all of chapter 3, we're looking at uh, linear equations and linear functions, something that you studied quite a bit in Algebra 1. Uh, so we're just, a lot of chapter 3 is review, but we're just going to go a little bit more in depth than you did in your previous algebra course. Um, so in 3.1 we're looking at constant change and the graph y equals mx plus b. Definitely something that you spent time with last year. A graph that looks like this in this form. Um, and all linear equations uh, model constant increase or constant decrease situations. So a situation in which there's an initial condition or a starting point. So that initial condition or that starting point is really that B value. And then there's a constant increase or decrease. Um, constant, that constant increase or decrease is the slope of that line. Um, these situations can be modeled using linear equations and the, the, the easiest way to model them is really to write them right away in the uh, y equals mx plus b form. So let's take a look at this first example here. Uh, it says a pool contains 85 gallons of water. Suppose a hose adds water to the pool at a rate of 7 gallons per minute. Write an equation for a function representing the amount of water in the pool t minutes after the hose is turned on. The pool can hold 1,359 gallons of water. So if we're going to do that problem, um, what we want to think about is what did I start with and then what is the change that's occurring. So my starting point is this right here we have 85 gallons of water in the pool so that's where I'm starting the constant change that is occurring is that every minute I'm adding seven gallons of water okay so those two values determine what our equation is going to look like so you'll notice that I wrote it in MX plus P form where seven is that constant change and 85 is my starting value. Okay, we've talked about linear functions quite a bit in this class and in previous courses as well. Um, but let's just define what we what we mean by a linear function. Just a function whose graph is a line is what we would say a linear function is. Okay, so in general, when we talk about a linear function, we can write it in the form y equals mx plus b. Now the only exception to that really is a vertical and horizontal line and we'll talk more about that as we kind of move through this particular unit. That's that slope intercept form that you've been working with now for a few years. So we want to take a look at applying that here in example number two. If you want to take a few minutes just pause the video. Why don't you try number two and then I'm going to go go ahead and go through that uh, here on the notes. Okay, so in number two it says a mudslide left 42 acre feet of mud in a valley. The mud being removed at a rate of five acre feet per day. Write in a linear equation to model this situation. Well, first of all, um, I know some of you kind of struggle with what does that mean, acre feet. Well, there, there's going to be a lot of units that we run into as we're going through this course that you might not be familiar with. And all acre feet is, is units. Okay. Same thing here, acre feet. Those are just units. So in terms of writing our equation, we don't really have to worry about that except for to understand that um, that's, that's the units for the amount of mud that we have there. Okay. So if I'm going to write a linear equation for that, well, the 42 is my starting point. That's how much mud was originally put in to the valley. Okay. I have a constant decrease in that amount because I'm always taking five acre feet out per day. So 
when I write my equation, I can say, well, here I started at 42, and I'm taking away 5x every day. Well, if I want to write that in slope-intercept form, I'm going to move those two terms around. And remember, the, the uh, sign goes with the, uh, the term, so it would be negative 5x plus 42. So this would represent the equation that we would be looking for there. Okay. And then part B says, when will the mud be removed? Well, you'll notice that when I did that, I set this equal to 0 because it means if when the mud is re removed, that means that the mud I in the valley is back to 0. So I want to set my equation that I, that I came up with right here. I want to set that to 0. So once I do that, I can now go through and solve for uh, I can solve for x. So I can add 5x to both sides, so that's how I get here to 5x equals 42. And then if I divide both sides by 5, I get that x is equal to 8.4. Okay, so that would represent the number of days it would take for the mud to re be removed. Part C says, what are the y-intercepts and the slope of the line represented by the equation in part A? And then part D says, graph the line and indicate the point that indicates no mud. Okay, so I kind of did those two together. So I've got my slope and my y-intercept, and I put them right here. And I just took them right off the equation. Remember, the slope is with the x value. The, um, the uh, y-intercept is that b value, so 42. So when I go to graph that, okay, here's my graph. You'll notice that the point where it intersects the x-axis, that would represent not only my x-intercept, but it also represents the point where we have zero mud in the valley. Okay? This point right here is the y-intercept. That would be that 42 that we have here. So as we mentioned in the last problem, that the value when the, when the function is equal to zero or y is equal to zero, that value is called the x-intercept. Okay, so where it crosses the x-axis is the x-intercept. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, just in general the, the lines and how that relates to their slope. So if I have a line that is a positive slope, as x increases, then so does y. Okay, so here's an example of a positively sloped line. It's going uphill as we move from left to right. If we have a negative slope line, as x is increasing, y is decreasing, so it's going downhill. If we look at a slope of a line that has a, a slope of 0, then we get a, a horizontal line, just y equals some. And then a vertical line does not represent a function. The slope of a, a vertical line is undefined. Okay. So as we look at number 3 here, uh, number 3 says find the slope, the y-intercept, and the x-intercept of the given line y equals negative 6x plus 15. Well, the slope and the y-intercept are pretty easy to find uh, based on our, because it's already in slope-intercept form. So negative 6 would represent that slope, and a positive 15 would be the y-intercept. Well, to get the x-intercept, though, I need to solve my equation in such a way that y is equal to 0. So anytime you're finding your x-intercept, you're having y equals 0. So I'm going to say 0 equals negative 6x plus 15. And now I'm going to solve that. I'm going to add 6x to both sides. 6x equals 15. And then I'm going to divide by 6 on both sides. Therefore, x is equal to 5 halves, or 2.5. And that's where we're getting this value right here. Okay. The last thing I want to talk about the, is the parallel lines and slopes theorem. And the parallel lines and slopes theorem just says if you have two non-vertical lines that are parallel, uh, or, or I should say if two non-vertical lines are parallel, um, they have the same slope. And it's a biconditional. You'll notice how when I wrote it here, it's if and only if. So if two non-vertical lines are parallel, they have the same slope. If two lines have the same slope, then they're parallel, so it goes in both directions there. And that concludes the notes for section 3.1.